So for today, I am not going to just jump right into synthetic division because it won't make any sense to you unless you understand long division. So let's make sure you get long division. We're going to start with a very simple 2 goes into 107. That's long division. If you can't do this long division, then you won't be able to do the weird polynomial long division. Step one, two doesn't go into one, but two does go into 10 five times. Then of course you're gonna multiply this, put a 10 here, draw the line, and make it the opposite of what it is. I know, in this case, let's subtract. Put on your polynomial ones, it's not. Sometimes it's add, sometimes they are subtract, and you change them to add. So you just change the sign. Then this has no remainder so far, but then we bring down this seven. Now does two go into seven? Yeah, how many times? Two times three is six. Draw the line, make it the opposite of what it is. One left. So if the question, <clears throat> gross. If the question is, does this, is this a factor? Is two a factor of 107? No. When you write this out and you go 2 times 53, that gets you close to 107, but then you'd have to add 1, which comes from down there. And therefore, since you have to add or subtract something, it's not a factor. Same thing happens on a basic long division. So let's do a basic long division here. x plus 3 goes into, I'm going to make it weird, x squared minus 9. Why is it weird? Because there's a missing what? X. Yes, or a missing term, you could say. So I do want to show you that you could do this without the missing term thing. <laughs> but here's what I'd do. I'd put in x squared plus 0x minus 9. It holds the place really nice. But I am going to show you that you could fight your way through it. You put an x up here either way. x times x is x squared. x times the 3 makes 3x. And the thing that's weird is that, like, you can't add a 9 and a 3x. Whereas over here, if you have an x squared plus 3x, and you draw the line, then it's right above something that kind of goes with it. The 0x and the 3x can kind of go together. Now, don't forget, though, the com most common mistake is to forget to make it opposite, 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 opposite. 0 minus 3x is negative 3x. Bring down the minus 9. Now, this stays all lined up, but you know what? You can just see that it's negative 3x minus 9 here. If you could handle that, look, you didn't even have to have a placeholder. Placeholders are not, like, required by law. They just, they, they can be complicated if you don't have a placeholder. So I'd use them unless you forget to use it, in which case, if it gets starting getting weird like this, it can still work. Final answer, I need to put something on the top, and it's a minus 3 because I want this times this to make exactly negative 3x. You want to match it exactly. And then this makes negative 9. I draw the line, and then I go opposite, opposite. Those cancel. Gentlemen, don't talk right now. This comes up to 0. So there's no remainder, which means it was a factor, and this times this equals that. Okay. Same thing would happen here, minus 3 here, and then you get negative 3x, minus 9, draw the line, opposite, opposite, zero remainder, it's a factor. So do you see that you don't have to have placeholders? Okay, now, what in the heck is this? All right, I'm going to show you. It's a shortcut, and I'll admit it's way faster than long division. So then, why do we do long division? Well, 
you won't have any idea how to set this up unless you can do long division first. And now, once we set it up, do you notice there's no x's in it? There's no x squareds? None of that stuff. So then it's cleaner and faster. All right. So let's actually go through some thoughts about factoring. Stuff we know so far. Go So get to this page. It's page two of the notes. What do you look for first? You look for a GCF, a greatest common factor, and you factor it out. If you have a trinomial, as in three terms, you get just two sets of things like this, two binomials. You can factor by grouping, and you can factor with long division when they're really big. More than four terms, that's when you use long division. What is this new thing? Synthetic division. It's like this. Do you know that a long time ago, there was really only one kind of oil? It was whale oil. They would get, oh, I know there's more than that, but that was a really common type of oil. In fact, in the United States for a long time, if you wanted to like have a lamp, it was gonna be burning oil. Where'd the oil come from? From whales. So they would go harpoon whales, haul them up, and take out the whale blubber and they they basically boil it and they get this fat and that whale fat was the oil that they used. Well, there's been a whole bunch of different kinds of oil since then. There's oil from underground uh, that, you know, like raw crude oil. Uh, there's also oil you get from like avocados. Avocado oil is really good for cooking because it doesn't burn unless you get it super hot. Um, and there's other kind of oils like butter that burn you know, so there's all kinds of oils out there in the world. What the heck is synthetic oil? It's a derivative of, it's not normal oil. Well, this synthetic division is like long division, but it's different. <coughs> so, let's get to it. If you understand long division, you should be able to do this long division. Then I'll show you <coughs> how you could have done it way faster with synthetic. Now, if you don't know how to do long division and you're like, I've understood everything else, it's just this long division that gets me, well, then that, that means you're probably not going to be able to get an A on this next test. Everybody makes a dumb mistake in honors because the class is so hard. You're going to make a dumb mistake. Okay. And if on top of the dumb mistake that you make, you also don't know how to do one of the major hard problems, then you're doomed to a B. Okay. So if you're good with a B on your next test, Fine. But you really need to push through. If you're struggling with this, you got to just practice it. I'd happily give you practice problems. The next chance to come in in the morning is two mornings from now on Thursday morning. You could come in and get us some extra help, and that would be really good timing because the test is on Friday. So if this stuff is freaking you out on your homework, come in and get some help Thursday morning. Okay, I put an x squared there, and that makes x to the third. And then they multiply it here, and that makes plus 1x squared. Draw a line. Opposite, opposite. 1x squared, or just x squared, is here. I bring this down to kind of keep going. And that's minus 5x. Next, I go up here and put a number. In this case, just an x x times x makes x squared. It matched perfectly. That's what you want to do. And then the x times the 1, 1x. One Draw the line. Opposite, opposite. Put them together. Notice it's not subtracting. Negative 5x minus an x makes negative 6x. I'm combining negative 5x and negative 1x. Then I bring this down. And I've found if this part will factor, that usually means it's going to work out nice. As in, 
it's probably not going to have a remainder if the last part factors. It's not a law. It's just what I've found. So now I'm going to go minus 6 here. Minus 6 times the x, negative 6x. Six minus 6 times the 1, negative 6. Draw the line. Oh, it's working. Opposite, opposite. When I put them all together, I get zero remainder. Yay, it worked. Now here's a classic mistake. A kid right here says, okay, so the answer is x plus 1 times x squared plus x minus 6. What's wrong with that? And if a million smart kids are sitting here stuck, it's because if you can factor it, you should. Do you get that x squared plus x minus 6 could factor? This is what happens in pre-calc over and over and over again. Why was this wrong? Because it wasn't factored all the way. Look for a way to factor it. X plus 1 was already factored, but this one factors. Think about it. Do you get 6 could break up into 2 and a 3? And I'd use a positive and a negative. It'll probably happen a few more times in here. The, the thing that's really impressive is how often it happens in pre -cup. I'll have the whole room, everybody's stuck, nobody knows what to do, and it's because they don't notice that it could be factored. So what was the final answer? X plus what and X minus what? Say it if you know it. Plus 3 minus 2. Cool. Now that's factored all the way. Okay, but you didn't come here today to just do long division. You were promised that we would show you how to do synthetic division. Now, remember what the answer was. And I'm going to now erase this and do it the synthetic way. I'm going to erase all of this. I'm just going to have the problem there. And I'll show you the shortcut. Now, I know at some point, some kids are going to say, you know what, I, I'd rather just do long division. I get it. I do it right every time. And you can. But on your next test, there will be one problem on there where you'll have to use synthetic division like four, sorry, long division like four times. And when you get good at synthetic, it literally takes one-third the amount of time. It's like super fast. Okay? So that's why you might want to do this is because long division would be pokey. You'll be finishing like two minutes after the bell rang. All right? Because you got to do long division so many times in one of the problems that you'd rather have a shortcut like this. Okay. So... Here's how it would be set up. And see if you can get the numbers from, from what I'm doing. See if you're smart enough to figure out where I got these numbers. And I'm going to draw a line like that. You guys see that where I got the numbers from? Yep. One of these things is not like the others. That just came from there, that just came from there, that just came from there, and that just came from there. But 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 negative one. Well it's gonna be It's called the zero because it makes this part zero. It's also called the solution to that. And if we want to do this short shortcut method, we have to know to use the zero, the root, the solution to it. Okay, now I'm going to go back and erase that. So it says I don't want to circle around it. Okay, so how do you do this method that's so short? Well, the first time I show you it, I have to show you slowly how to do it. Uh, and so it's not going to be incredibly short. But, all right, this next part is where you're going to just be processing those numbers. They're just the numbers and there's no x's, right? So I drop this down and I just make it a one. Snoop Dogg says, uh, drop it like it's hot. 
There you go. You just dropped it. All right. Don't hear Matthew just quoting Snoop Dogg near enough. Okay. Now I have to do something that's going to get me my next little number here. And you don't just drop the two down. You go this times that. What's one times negative one? Negative one. And you put it here. Okay, so I just multiplied. Then I'm going to add again. What's 2 minus 1? Well, it's 1. Re rinse and repeat. You know on the shampoo bottle, it says lather, rinse, and repeat. Now, some of you are probably like, well, yeah, I've always done that. Well, and others of us are like, yeah, you only have to do it once. Why would they put repeat on there? You'll use twice as much shampoo. Perfect. You'll buy the stuff twice as fast. You don't have to do it twice. You can if you want to. And I know for some of you, are like with super long hair, you're like, you don't even understand, Mr. Server. I got to do it three times. Anyway, so back to rinse and repeat. This times that. Negative one again. Add them straight down again. Negative six. This times that. What's negative six times negative one? Positive six. Add them straight down. Ooh, there's a zero. I ended with a zero. Does that sound familiar? Didn't, when we were doing the long division, didn't we end up getting a, a zero at the very end? So now we block this off, and that's called the remainder. Okay. And do you notice that so far I haven't ever had to have an X in my answer? There's no X's yet. So, I now have to put in the X's because I'm at the answer point. I'm at the answer. I'm done. And I have to now put in my X's. If you have a short-term memory, you may remember that we had these factors at the end. And then we had to remember, oops, that could get factored again, right? But we had these red factors. I can look at this and say, oh, that tells me one of my factors is x plus 1. And these are the coefficients on there, there, and there. So this is my constant term. This is my x's, and this is my x squared. So my final answer is x squared plus x Minus 6. See how that happened? Now, again, at this point, I would totally understand you thinking, well, I'll just do it the other way. I'll do long division. And you can. But once you get good at this, a kid doing long division is going to take about five minutes to do a hard problem. And a kid doing synthetic can do it in about one minute. It's literally, it's way, 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 way faster. Okay, so I will even make a bold statement. You don't have to use synthetic, but it'd be a little bit like saying a baby could get through life crawling. It'd be kind of a lot more efficient if you could learn to walk because it'd go a lot faster. But if a baby had to, a baby could crawl to school. Uh, yeah, but you probably want to walk. Okay, so so this is maybe hard to learn, but once you learn it, it's so much faster. Okay, so here's another example side by side. Look at this. This is on page four. So if you had done it with long division, look at all those steps. If you'd done it with synthetic, it would look like that. Yes? 
Um, it's not a great time. Uh, ask me again in about five minutes. Okay, so do you see how this and this go together? One of them is the zero, the other one is the factor. Do you get where you get one, two, negative five, negative six? One, two, negative five, negative six. So if you do long division here, notice, drop it like it's hot. The first step is easy to forget. Then it's multiply, that times that gives you this. Then you add them straight down and you get this. Then you multiply it again and you get that. Add them straight down and you get this. Multiply with this. Goes right there, zero remainder. All right, you'll never really understand until you do it. Okay, so go to this page. And instead of doing the long division, just, just wait, do, watch this one. I think you'll understand. Instead of doing this long division, do you see that that is telling you to put a three here? Raise your hand if you understood that. Okay, good. Then please copy down this, this, and this here, here, and here. Two, negative one, negative 15. Snoop Dogg told you the first step. Drop that down. Then it's a series of multiplying and putting it here and then adding, multiplying, adding, and then the remainder goes in the little box at the end, and if the remainder is zero, it worked. If the remainder is not zero, then it didn't work and it wasn't a factor. And you'd have to just tell me, so what was the remainder? And if you get the remainder right, I know you probably did it right. All right. So two times three, this times this, make six, add them, multiply them, add them. See how quick that is? Now, can you interpret? Can you speak synthetic? What's that part mean? X minus three. What's this part mean? Two X, keep going. Plus five, yes. Can you speak synthetic? Keenan. What happened to the 2x squared? What happened to the 2x squared? Excellent question. We factored it. So we didn't want this to come out to that. Like, we didn't want that. All right. So we factored it, and we figured out that how about this, Keenan? If you multiply this out, what's the first thing you'd get? Come on, just multiply it out. It's just 2. Ah, that's where the 2x squared is. It got factored out. Because this times this equals that. That's the whole point. We're factoring it. Okay. Let's move on to another one. Is x equals negative 8 a solution? Well, remember, they usually would say it like x plus 8, but this time they just said, is negative 8 a solution of that? Well, then you put negative 8 here. You can't put the factor there. It wouldn't make any sense. You don't want x's there. The next three numbers I would write would be 2, 10, and negative 46. Sometimes it's just hard to get started, but drop it like it's hot. Let's see if you can finish this thing. Then, even more important, see if you can interpret it. Again, if you're missing your crawling, so to speak, you can crawl for the rest of your life if you want to. You can just do long division. It will work. It'll get you from here to there. But once you get this, it goes so fast. That times that, negative 16. Add them, negative 6. Multiply them, 6 times 8, 48. 
add them, positive two. Did you guys get two at the end? Cool. What does that mean? Two is a remainder. Good. So did this thing factor? No, because no, it had a remainder. So all you'd have to do is say no, and the remainder is two. Okay. Next one. All by yourself. Shouldn't need me. Should be able to do this. I'll pause for a sec while you give the, the first truly hard synthetic problem a try. So I hope you started with a negative 2 right here. And if you're like, well, how do you decide if it's negative 2 or positive 2? If they give you a factor, they would have given it to you like this. And if they give you the solution, it's just a number. Okay? And that's always the number that would make that factor 0. Next, I just simply copy these down. 3, 4, negative 3, 1, and negative 2. Then, hardest part sometimes, just get started. That drops, and then you multiply. 3 times negative 2, negative 6. Add them, negative 2. Multiply this times this, positive 4. Add them is a 1. Multiply, negative 2. Add them is a negative 1. Multiply them is a positive 2. Sweet, I had a 0 remainder, and it worked. So, what's did it work? Yes, it worked. So, what's the answer? Interpret it if you haven't already. That's x plus 2, but what in the heck is all of that? Well, I always go from the right ends because I know this last number is a constant. It doesn't have an x. Okay, then the next one has a regular x, and this will have x squareds, and this will have x to the thirds. So there we go. 3x to the third minus 2x squared plus x minus 1. Now, it's a trap. Because you might think, after all that work, that it would be factored all the way. But what if that factors again? Now, that one doesn't factor by grouping. So it's not a factor by grouping. So how the heck would we expect you to know what goes into it? That's what I teach you tomorrow. You can tell by looking at this and this what goes into this and is a factor like this. And then you test it using synthetic and you figure out which of them actually works. Okay, so we're not going to do that today. That's too much. For today, it's just synthetic like we just did. And if you got to this part exactly and you at least thought about, I wonder if that factors again, then you win. If you thought you were done and you were, you were positive, you were right, then you didn't even think about factoring it again, that's what's going to happen all the time on the test. People will get it factored to here, and then they stop, and then they're wrong. Because this can be factored again. It's another synthetic. But you just don't know what to take out of it. Like, maybe it's just one. Well, one goes into everything, so that's kind of dumb. It's like, take seven and factor it using one. Well, it's one times seven. So one, it can't be your answer. But maybe it's two or negative two. Like, just this just happened. Okay, so again, I'll teach you that tomorrow. My the next slide, this one. This one has a missing term. It tells you at the top, with missing term. So it's got an x to the fifth. It skips the x to the fourths. That means there's zero x to the fourths. And then it goes to the third, to the second, to the first, and then the last one's just a constant. Do you know what to do now that I just told you that there's a missing term? So you can do it. I'm just going to prevent some pain by putting a negative 3 there. A lot of people put a... Th oh, wait, I'm wrong. It's a positive 3. Dang it. I just was about to mess it up, but at least I caught it. It's a regular 3, not a negative 3. 1, 0, negative 11, 5, 8, negative 15. Drop it like it's hot. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna walk somebody through it, and it's not gonna be super fun, so I'm gonna let the dice pick, so you won't be mad at me. You can just be mad at fate. All right. Row five, person three, which would normally be Becca Rowland, so it goes to the next person. Eyes up. Are you ready? One times three. Add them. Multiply them. Add them. Close. Isn't it negative two, I think? Okay. Multiply them. Add them, multiply them, add them, multiply them, add them. The remainder is zero. Can you translate? Because it worked. Okay, our remainder is zero. Isa, what's this part mean? Excellent. I always start with the rest of it on this end. So that's a five. What comes next? Um, five. Yep. And that's a positive five, right? Yep. Okay. And then keep telling me with the sign of the next term. So this comes down. Nice. Keep going. Positive three X to the third. And then X to the fourth. One X to the fourth to make it extra clear where the one went. Awesome, and did you even think about whether you could factor that? If so, you win. If you just thought you were done, that you're gonna lose on the test because it's gonna factor, and it's gonna factor again, and then it's gonna factor again. So you get like a final answer that's all factored really nice all the way out. Okay. This is just a simple question, and now that you have two different tools, you could log divide it or you could synthetic it. Would you please figure out the answer? I'll show you how I would have done it. Because I remembered that there was placeholders in here. It would have actually been more interesting, this is just an, in my opinion, if we would have made this come out like this. You know what? Wait a minute. This factors, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Oh, no, it doesn't. We should have made it factor at the end, but, but, but we didn't. I thought this was going to work. I really honestly did. But then I check this and this. It makes 4x, not 2x. The other way thing we could have done is made this 
negative four. If that would have ended up with a negative four, we could have used x minus two and x minus two. No, wait, if we'd have made this a negative two. Anyway, bottom line is we could have made it factor at the end, but we didn't. Probably should do that next year to show you that, look, it factors again, kids, but this one actually didn't. Okay. On to this one. Last practice, and then you're on to your homework. And I think you'll understand synthetic, and I think you'll like it, because it's faster. Tonight's homework will go way faster. Yes? On the other problem, doesn't it factor if you need plus 2y and negative 2 Oh, yes. If you want to use imaginaries, absolutely. You are correct, sir. Nice caught catch. But on the test, we do not require factoring with imaginaries. Janet done already. That's a lot of kids. I'll start them. So did any of you bring it all the way home? Raise your hand if you had x plus 3 and x minus 2 at the end. Nice. You noticed that it factors further. Okay. Cool. Look at this crazy collection of numbers. And now you actually know what, what it means and, like, what to do. It just seems like a foreign language. But... Once you know how to read it, it's not that bad, and it goes quick, and it's way faster than long division. You could have done this with long division, and it would have been way slower. But to be honest, we were even talking this year about, should we just cut out synthetic because you don't have to do synthetic. You could just have done long division. It would have worked. So it's just like it's extra fast way to do long division. So it's, and I, I heard I can see the argument on both sides. It's cool, it goes fast, and it's one more thing that the kids don't actually have to know. It takes a whole extra day of curriculum time. So I can see the argument both ways. We decided, obviously, to leave it in. All right, we are going to skip that one, and we're just going to go right to the homework, grab the worksheet, open it up, and let's... decide which one's to chop out to make it more reasonable. Last night's homework, I just had you do, the, what did I say, the evens last night? Okay, so you just did the evens, or I didn't even care, a kid that said they did the odds, that's fine. It's not like I'm trying to like hide the answers from you, They're, the answers were all given. So, I'm looking at your new worksheet here, and number one is a very good one, and we should definitely do it. That's also good, and four. Okay, well, everything's going to be good, Mr. Server, so can't we just skip one? Yes, we will skip number four, and can you scroll a little further? And six, keep going, let's see if it goes any further. Four, six, and eight. Trying to keep your assignments reasonably sized so you would keep doing them. Skip four, six, and eight. Hakan, would you read me number one? Yes. Um, 
is x a factor of y equals x cubed minus 16x squared plus Wait a minute. 28x. Wait a minute. Okay, I, I got behind. The, the big long one again is, read it to me. A factor of y equals x cubed minus 16x squared plus 28x. Okay, cool. So, there's a missing term on this one. Did you catch it? There's a 1 for this. There's a negative 16 next. There's a 28. And then, weirdly, the missing term is at the end. Do you get there's no constant at the end? So, I'm going to just throw in a plus 0. 0. Okay. Immortal words of Snoop Dogg. Drop this like it's hot. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. And finish it. 2 times 0 is 0. And add. Now, you got to know that because only one of them is your remainder. Remember how the very last thing, that's the remainder? So then this gives me x minus 2. This, this is the constant as in no x. This one has the x and this one has the x squared. So now I know it's x squared minus 14x. Could you put plus 0? Sure. But do I have to put plus 0 at the end? No, that's kind of dumb. And are you smarter than a third grader? Wasn't that the name of the TV show? Or was it fifth grader? I can't remember. Ah, fifth grader. Did you notice that this factored again? I hope you did. There. I factored it all the way. Okay. Totally get that this might need a little bit of like, I'm lost, Mr. Server. Come on, come on up and ask me questions. But that's it for the lesson for today. You learned how to do synthetic division.